Hey everyone, um, welcome and thank you for, for joining. Um, today we're going to be talking about local Istio development. Um, so I've been working on Istio for about two years now, and over that time I've, I've built um, my own builds of Istio thousands and thousands of times. And what I found was that um, after I started working from home and my processing power and internet speed dropped dramatically, uh, my productivity fell quite a bit. Um, so during that time I worked on a variety of ways to speed this up by various means of testing it locally. Um, and I want to share these ideas and um, uh, yeah, with you, with you all. And so what we're going to do is go over a few high level um, topologies of working with Istio locally. And then I will attach a GitHub repo that has more extensive scripts and commands to actually enact these. Um, so with that being said, let's get started. <coughs> So our first and uh, most common setup, this is kind of our baseline that we'll be comparing everything else to, is the fully cloud environment. Um, so this would be just like you're testing with a real Kubernetes cluster and some cloud provider um, and you know a real Docker registry. And so every time we want to make a change, we would build all the images, push them up to the registry, and then do some kubectl commands to modify our deployments to use the new images. And then our Kubernetes cluster is going to pull from that registry. So end to end, this can take quite a while. For, for me, oftentimes this was in the minutes um, just to test even a, a trivial change um, between all of the pushing hundreds of megabytes um, and then the Kubernetes cluster, of course, has to pull those as well. Um, so this is quite slow. <clears throat> um, this does have some benefits though. There's nothing running on your machine aside from the build. Um, so that there's minimal utilization uh, locally. And it does closely resemble production environments. So we can do things like running large scale tests as well, or things like that require external load balancer, for example. Uh, like I mentioned though, this is extremely slow in some cases, and it can be very expensive as well, as you need to pay for the compute and potentially storage costs as well. Um, so the easiest improvement we can make on that is doing the exact same thing, but bringing everything locally. Um, so here we can see uh, almost the exact same setup. We've replaced the cloud Kubernetes though with a local Kubernetes and the cloud Docker registry with a local Docker registry. Um, so Docker ships a, like the, a local registry that you can run within your own Docker uh, daemon locally. Um, and then there's a vast um, array of local Kubernetes offerings. So you can run a full Kubernetes deployment on your machine. Um, so there's things like Kind, K3S, Micro K8s, Minikube. Um, there's a lot of them out there now. I personally use Kind, um, which is Kubernetes and Docker, uh, but you're free to use other ones. And this, when you do this, your development cycle looks pretty similar. You're still pushing and pulling images and doing the same kubectl commands. Um, but because everything's local, it's all, um, all the Docker pushes and pulls are over a local host, which is uh, extremely fast. So, like I mentioned, yeah, this is much faster. Um, one other benefit as well is that it can be a lot more reproducible. It's hard to go tell someone to go spin up, you know, a GKA cluster um, and run some tests, but it's very easy to say, go set up a kind of cluster with these exact parameters and everyone can do it. Um, especially our testing runs on kind. So if we have an issue in a test and it's not reproducing in, you know, GKA or something, um, it's very likely that it will, will reproduce if you follow the same setup that the tests are doing. Um, it also allows really bespoke clusters, so you can do things like enabling alpha features, um, testing uh, bleeding edge Kubernetes versions, or doing complex multi-cluster setups. Um, there are some downsides though. Uh, everything's running locally, so there's a bit of overhead. Um, it doesn't take that many resources to run Kubernetes, but if you wanted to run like five clusters on a small laptop, you may run into issues. Um, and while things are faster, there's still some overhead because we have to build the Docker image, push it, pull it, spin up a pod, um, which is now, it's not on the order of minutes now, but it, there's still some slight overhead. And because everything's running in Docker, um, it can be kind of hard to attach a debugger. It's not impossible, but there's a lot of uh, complex steps to get it set up. So to resolve some of those issues, what we can do is actually run all of the Istio binaries locally. Um, so these are just standard Go binaries um, that we can run with Go run, just like any other. Um, so we can run on our local machine, Istio D and pilot agent. 
and Easter D will connect to our Kubernetes cluster that's just configured with uh, kubectl out of the box. So this, it is actually as simple as just running this command. There's no parameters required, no configuration to set up. Um, there are a few with the proxy to enable, which is documented in the GitHub repo at the end of this talk. Um, so the great thing about this is that it's really fast. Um, the only bottleneck we have is Go compilation time, which is, you know, seconds. Um, it also makes it really easy to run a debugger or even just click like the Go run button on your IDE. Um, so this is really great to do rapid iteration of uh, various changes to Istio. Um, one thing that may be challenging is it's not exactly representative of a production environment. Um, so it may be hard to test things like webhooks or uh, certainly like scale uh, testing. It's also kind of hard to test actual traffic, especially involving IP tables. Um, you can probably do it, but it's it's not trivial for sure. And it, this probably only works on Linux to run uh, Envoy. So there are some downsides, but if you can get this set up, it is the probably quickest way to iterate. There's also some variations of this where we could run just the local proxy, but have EastJD running in the cluster. Uh, this would be like doing a port forward uh, to the EastJD. This is pretty simple. It has a lot of the same benefits, um, but also the same issues as the previous one. But if we're just trying to develop the proxy, uh, we may not care to run Istio locally. Uh, we can also do the inverse of running Istio D locally, but the proxies remotely. Um, this, of course, has all the benefits of running Istio D locally, but we also have the benefits of running the proxy in the cluster. Um, the one main downside here is that it does require connectivity from the cluster to the local network. Um, in my setup, this I can only do this with a local cluster, um, but it's still quite handy for certain uh, certain testing. So all these other examples were basically just variations of Kubernetes, Istio, and uh, the proxy just deployed in different places. But we can do some more uh, interesting setups. So if we're just testing like what Envoy configuration does it can be really quick to just run Envoy directly. Um, so Envoy can take a plain YAML configuration file that has just like the similar output of the config dump from Envoy and run that directly. Um, so in this case, there's no Kubernetes or Istio involved. Um, this is, of course, super fast. Um, because there's no Istio dependency, it also is really great for minimal Envoy reproductions, especially for posting issues um, to Envoy. Um, this, of course, is very different from a real Istio environment, and it, it can be kind of challenging to get the config right if you're not familiar with um, programming Envoy directly. It, it involves you know, hundreds of lines of YAML. Uh, we can also do the opposite, and instead of removing Istio from the picture, we can remove Envoy and instead connect to Istio D directly from various other clients. Um, so the proxy to Istio D connection is done over a gRPC stream. So we can use a tool called gRPC curl, um, which is basically curl, but for gRPC. And there's plenty of other tools that can do similar things and actually send direct requests of whatever we want to Istio directly. So the main benefit of this is that we have complete control over the requests. So we could send things that even Envoy potentially would never send, uh, like completely invalid requests or uh, oddly ordered requests, that sort of thing. Um, and it, the, you know, the main challenge is that it can be hard to reproduce what requests the proxy would, would actually send. Um, so there's a lot of metadata, et cetera, that's actually required in the request, uh, which can make this a bit challenging. Um, so that's all of the different methods. Um, there's no one size fits all, I think. Um, all these have pros and cons, and I, I use these all routinely um, for different setups. Depending on what I'm testing, I'll use a different um, setup. So I encourage you to try them all out. Um, in this talk, I just described the high level overview of how this works because we only have 10 minutes. Um, but if you dive into the GitHub link here, you'll have details on exactly how to set these all up with some scripts um, and aliases. So please try it out. Um, let me know and good luck.